Hi, Lucy. Hello, Trini. How are you doing? I'm good. Guess what we're doing? Is it? Is it? Is it? Fifty Shades of Grey. It's Fifty Shades of Grey. I have Fifty okay. Shades of Grey right here for you. Who suits which greys? Which greys can you wear? And what colours do they go with? But before we start, darling, what have you got to show me this week? Oh, well, the challenge last week was vintage. Vintage. This dress. I have had since I was 16. I wore it to my prom. It's from Versus, which is the sister of Versace. Yes. And so it's about um, 21 years old. Unbelievable. And it still fits you like a glove. It still fits me. It's a little bit tight. Where is it a little bit tight, Lucy? Um, it's a little bit tight right here. Oh, you tell them, darling. <laughs> Having a baby. She's having a baby. Lucy's having a baby. We couldn't wait to tell you ladies. And when's your due date, darling? Just so everyone can know. End of February. So I'm 21 weeks now. So you know what's going to be really great for those people who follow us who are having babies is to see how you interpret looks when you're a bit more pregnant. I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'll definitely be looking at some maternity wear. So that's quite exciting. Brilliant. All right, I'm sure we will have thousands of comments today all congratulating you, my darling. <laughs> it's joyful news. Okay, Thank you. So... Moving on. Moving on to grey. And I think we'll start, Lucy, which, which grey suit who. I think that might be helpful, don't you? So I've got together a little selection of my favourite greys, and I'm just going to show you. So I've got a mixture of things here. This is probably one of my oldest grey pieces. It's this fake fur piece, but when it's on, it will have a life of its own. The colour is somewhat dulled, and I'm going to see if that grey still suits me. You can go from real charcoal through to kind of just a beautiful, what I call a sort of bluer grey, through to what nearly is an oatmeal grey. You know, it's nearly beigey. And then to a kind of pure, lovely, I don't know what you call that. It's not charcoal and it's not dove, it's in between. And then textures of grey, because we think of grey sometimes as a flat colour. Gilets we're going to go through using some faux fur in grey, I think is really beautiful. And then bringing in what really verges nearly on silver, like my Stella McCartney shirt and things. But the wonderful thing of grey, Lucy, is there's hardly any shades that don't go with the other shades. Never warm, so neutral or a little bit cooler. Yeah, and you that's going to be the only shade that, you, that would do that in a category. Yeah, you're right, it's the only shade. All right, nice. so should we get started with an outfit? So, Lucy, this is one of my favorite um, gray coats and it's acne. I got this so many years ago. It's just like that kind of cardigan slash coat. Because I like gray on gray on gray, like gray with black takes away the richness of gray. So I found, took a long time to find these gray jeans which are my classic citizens of humanity. And I wear them with everything. I'm gonna take this off now because I'm so goddamn hot. This is old Zara, they always do this fabric. And I get a lot of round neck gray tops from Zara in this fabric. And I, for traveling, I inevitably wear navy or gray. The socks, because they're cropped are really important. It took me forever to find gray socks. Ooh, so I found three sets. From Tabio, I have these, which are kind of little flecked lurex socks and then i've got these which are men's socks i got because there are far more men's socks that are gray than women's socks that are gray so i bought them and i shrunk them and now they fit me because they were like size men's 11 or something okay and that color gray is the perfect gray that goes with most of my things and then the ones i have on are um folk but they don't do them every year so i've only got two pairs so i i never want to get them lost uh, okay. Oh, such good socks. Such good socks. So I'm just going to do now how I would do this as a real, my Jennifer Aniston look if I'm not doing the trackies. This is my very relaxed weekend look, Lucy, and it's a variation of when I did the track bottoms, but I'm using the cashmere top from Chinty and Parker, my old Celine coat, which is the best shape in the world. Vestiaire Collective sell these old Celine coats, and they are such a classic shape. This can look equally good with a long skirt underneath, as it does with a crop jean, as it does with a flared trouser, because it ends yeah. exactly the right point on the knee, just a tiny bit above. So it allows for volume at the bottom. You always ask me about scarves. So I thought I would just do some scarf moments here. This is the gray that most suits me. If I go darker or paler, I need more makeup, but this is my makeup free gray color. So some days I might do BFF Stress, and I'll do a scarf, very big on my scarves. I think it's from Hermes. And I'm just gonna do my casual twist like that. Tucking it in and having it the right weight to do that, to me is the most flattering chic way to wear a scarf. Do you 
definitely. It's too voluminous when it's outside the jacket. Yeah, and then a little bit of Freddie. Nice. And, and where I'm are done. they from? My makeup products are from Trini London. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so that's one scarf technique. Another thing as well, when you've got something all this colour, maybe you just want to break it up with one interesting bag. Because that's the thing, grey is this incredible backdrop for a beautiful sharp accessory. On days when I'm happy to be matchy-matchy, I use silver. I wouldn't yes. use gold ever with grey. This is again talking about texture. So this is a chainmail bag I got in Paris at a shop called Merci. You know, when you don't want a bag to take up any room, but you just want it like a piece of jewellery. Wow. You can do that. That is stunning. And it's yeah. just looking for the beauty of design in a piece, which builds up a stylish wardrobe. This is a cost one. I love the idea. Again, this, is, this was such a good bag. This is suede and chain. Again, that lovely softness of fabric. And then my final one I use, which is leather, is the one I got from Saint Laurent. And this is, you know, when you talk about an accessory that's grey that goes with everything, if you don't wear much grey but you find a grey bag, it goes with everything. Trini, how do you, that bag is immaculate from the day you bought it. How yeah. do you store it? I'll show you. This is how I store them, Lucy, and they're just, I got this from Habitat, and I'm, I'm quite casual with my bags. You know, the sun generally doesn't come from that because I keep it closed a lot and the room isn't that dusty. But then I use them because they're always there. This is a trip down memory lane because this is how I dressed when I first met Charles, so like five years ago. I remember going on a date and I wore exactly this, but it's like jeans, a white top, and a beautiful, soft, gray, flattering piece. This coat, I just adore it. This coat was, I think, like 60 pounds in a shop in Kensington Park Road in Notting Hill. and. You know, it's very tired now because it is like, if I put a, a lighter next to it, I would go up in flames, okay? But it, there's something about the softness of it. You know, I do love dove grey with white. If I had this like that, okay, do you see my skin tone? Yeah. So this colour grey is not my best grey when I haven't got something to pump underneath it. Yeah. But it's one of the chicest greys. So white immediately does something. The darker I go, the more I went to like Freddie lip to cheek, you know, or a plummy colour. But the paler I go, the more then it's about my eyes. So, Lucy, my favourite eye for this is T-tones. This is like my best combination. This is mystery. So I take the kind of topiness of the grey as my base. And then in the same pot, I use magician. A magician you can just build up and up to get that wonderful cool grey. So then I do Lady J and Talis. So I put Lady J on my lips. This is like cool nude, but because my pigment is a little bit dark, it looks too pale, but it's beautiful on the cheek. And then I take Talis over and you build your perfect fresh lip. Gorgeous. And then I'm done. So that's my, one of my favourite makeups, Lucy, for um, wearing grey. Should we get a bit smarter now? Yeah. I love this suit. It's my work suit, but it's a suit that's different from a trouser suit. It's Comme de Gasson. It came like a kimono and then cut into right at here. Looked like I had a willy in some ways. So I actually straightened it. And sometimes you can be scared when you find a beautiful designer piece to think I shouldn't change anything, but it just didn't work for me. So I just streamlined that. But I love the length of the jacket. I love the idea of doing a trouser suit in gray that wasn't your classic trouser suit. So I've got the Zara sleeveless tee just to be a little bit cooler. And then I've got my Robert Clergerie because I've got that gray in the boot that's in the t-shirt. So this requires, Lucy, in my mind, a bright lip because I don't have the white to pop it. I thought to myself, red or pink? Now, if I do red, red is quite warm and I need to go cooler. So I'm thinking that pink is better. I think instantly when you put that pot in front of your face, it looks like the right shade. I think you're right and it made my eyes look bluer. I think that's the thing about wearing grey as well is that you can, if you don't have that makeup that pops, you might sort of fade away it's a really good point and i think with gray you really have to think about your makeup yeah and that's what maybe puts people off as well as it perhaps being their school uniform when they were younger whenever i was selling my books lucy um and we were choosing jacket covers and my woman would always say do the two meter rule which is you know what do you see from two meters away and the same applies with makeup 
you know what do you see from two meters away is is your outfit wearing you or is your face wearing the outfit and that to me i look at that pink and i know that works yeah it's gorgeous not just that close up so this is my wham bam thank you glam look for gray when i want to be really glamorous but feeling the comfort i love this Oh, yes, give us a 12. I love this too, Lucy. And it's uh, Serena V. Trouser, trainer from Hogan. This is Solas London, which is an amazing brand that does very dramatic sleeves. And I love a dramatic sleeve. I like the juxtaposition of the kind of silvery flecked grey with the beautiful silk charcoal grey. I didn't hold anything back for the makeup i just thought let me really do a smoky smoky eye i mean i went mad on universe Ooh. with chalice together oh that's a nice combination and it makes that very sort of gray smoky eye which just amps it up and just to be even a bit lazy about application you know i'm just kind of very roughly putting it on and then in the corner of my eye because i want to pop the silveriness that you have imagined with grey. So I'm taking a little bit of star and I'm just going to do a little bit here in the corner and underneath the lash line. So you've got like an ombre effect between the inner corner of my eye and the outer corner of my eye. Like that goes that. so well with your top. Yeah. Grey is this amazing alternative to black when you wear it at night time and you incorporate a little bit of a shimmer to it. And it's softer, you know, sometimes as we go down the path of life, Black as an evening look is very hard, but we want something that carries the sophistication of what black represents for us. So by doing a kind of smoky eye, but keeping it softer, by doing a texture and a bit of shimmer, which I always say around your neck, but in a fabric that feels eveningy. To me, this is the ultimate Lucy in sort of ageless dressing. This is a wonderful, dramatic, I'm here. It's a posing moment. Whereas the next one I'm going to show you is a surprisingly curling up around the fire moment. So this is my stay at home casual yet dress up. I'm wearing sweatpants, but I'm not look. So I am in essence wearing a Zara, very, very high waisted, nearly too much so because my gusset feels really low. And then I've got an old gilet from Massimo Dutti in a slightly darker gray. And then I have on some rather mad, these come from a, Balenciaga and Zara, and I can't remember which pair I've got on, to be honest. They were that similar. The necklace is Marnie. Throwing on a gilet and a necklace transforms that look immediately. Yeah, I think it's the necklace that pulls it all together. And I just did a little bit of Suze, because I wanted that coolness again, and Suze is a, is a very cool nude lip. I feel great in that. Very nice, yeah, it's really good. I think it's just that dressing grey and it not being drab. Oh, I'm going to show you now how to definitely make Gray, not drab. This is, funnily enough, my favorite outfit I would wear if I was going to an event and I was going to be photographed. Because in the olden days, Lucy, I'd go to an event and I'd be photographed. And sometimes I'd suddenly rise in the car, I was in something really creasy, and I lay on the floor of the car so, so I wouldn't get creased. But I'd never have to worry with this. It was an moment. Yeah, it was so out fan. But this is by Galvin London, and he's like the king of sequins. And I think what's really interesting is that how we perceive sequins is smarter than not. Wear some earrings, wear a necklace. You know, I started off by thinking high heel, you know, put a necklace on. It changes it all and it dates it, ladies. Cast aside jewellery when you're wearing a sequin dress is my advice. Keep it so clean that basically your jewellery is a dress and dress it down. I'm wearing it with trainers. I mean, even that, does that make it? No, that's too evening-y already. Do you see what I mean, Lucy? Yeah. So then, that's like doesn't, doesn't work. No. Take that off. Mm, too much volume. My God, my room is getting untidy. I might do that. Like a proper sort of blazer. And then if I was going to wear this out, I might just put that on top and then throw on like a woolly scarf. So just think of all those sequin things you've got casual them down but that to me is just such a great way to utilize a dress that otherwise would lie in my wardrobe waiting for a black tie event this is exactly the way i love gray it's that you know right by your face you know something that i love about this way of dressing yeah it's very modern so much 
so much, so loose. It leaves us to think, what have we, I mean, we've done so many things recently and what we've still got on our list and what women would like to see. Well, I saw a comment about winter whites. Ooh. Ooh. Which Ooh. I liked. Yes, and with social distancing, like I said a few weeks ago, much easier exactly. for people not to touch you and get you dirty. Exactly. Uh, and there was also winter sequins, of course. The thing is, they bring joy, sequins, and it's a time right now that we need to feel that fullness of joy in how we dress. We're going to, I think we're going to, but tell me what you think, ladies. We'll give you options. One idea could be, I'm going to take six of my sort of smart, lovely sequin things and I'm going to dress them way down. That's such a great idea, okay. Trini. That would be my top choice, but I'm open to winter white or another colour, I think, was purpley colours that people yes. wanted. So yes. we could consider that. So you ladies, you choose. And next week, Lucy, you're going to do how to channel grey when you're pregnant. Yes. Yes. All right, my love. Until next okay. week. Bye. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.